Rabbi Fink, Abby, civic leaders, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. While I'm here, I just want to add a hearty mazal tov to this year's deserving honorees. And among the multitudes of proclamations that you're going to be receiving during the course of the evening, I do want to mention one special, special message that I have for you. It says, thank you for throwing us such a lavish birthday party. Signed, Diane Lent and Vicky Turek. Happy birthday. I'm going to pay for that one. It truly is a privilege for me to be asked to introduce Congresswoman Nita Lowy. You grace us with your presence, and we're grateful to have this opportunity. Congresswoman Lowy is currently serving her 12th term in Congress. During a quarter of a century of public service of great distinction, she has justifiably garnered a reputation for being a legendary legislator, as well as being a staunch and loyal advocate for our beloved State of Israel. She holds senior positions on just about every congressional committee and subcommittee of importance. The list is too long for now, but suffice it to say that in her vital capacity of actually appropriating foreign aid, or as we say in Israel's case, foreign investment, Congresswoman Lowy plays a pivotal role in helping to maintain and ensure Israel's qualitative edge, military edge, in a very rough neighborhood. One can only be impressed, as we were recently in Washington, those of us who were there, by the reverence in which Congresswoman Lowy is held by politicians and lay leaders alike, regardless of political affiliation. Respect and regard emanate freely from both sides of the aisle. Tonight, as you know, or you may know, is a somewhat bittersweet occasion in that in the coming months, we shall be losing our current congressional representative to the vagaries of redistricting. But we look forward to gaining another good friend in the form of Congressman Elliot Engel, who we are delighted to welcome here tonight. It is an honor to host you, and we thank you for making time in your hectic schedule. In our own relatively microcosmic world of young Israel of New Rochelle, Congresswoman Lowy has joined hands with us in trying times and has enabled us to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles. In those situations, her sincerity, compassion, and humanity supersede partisan party politics. So this evening, our community is gratified and proud to be able to welcome a leader in every sense of the word who continues to be a loyal friend to young Israel of New Rochelle and a steadfast friend to the State of Israel. Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Nita Lowy. Thank you. Before I hand the floor to the Congresswoman, which is a bit of a chutzpah for me to stand in the way of a congresswoman, but I just want to share with you, thank you, I just want to share with you that we have a small gesture of our appreciation. Uh, if I may, I'd like to read it out so everybody can hear it. Presented to Congresswoman Nita Lowy, with deep gratitude for your support of our community and for your invaluable role in continually strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship. Young Israel of New Rochelle, March 25th, 2012. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Michael, for that very gracious introduction. It's such a pleasure for me to be here with you this evening. I am honored by this recognition, and I would also like to thank Rabbi Reuven Fink, Presidents Bernie Michael, Dina Sturman, the Executive Director Barbara Bolshan, Judy and Bob Friedman, Sandra and Uri Weinstein. Before I speak about our shared commitments on which we worked so hard together, let me say from the bottom of my heart that I am saddened that redistricting has moved New Rochelle out of my district. 
For decades, we have worked together to make this an even better community to live, work, and raise families. I will deeply miss you all, so many dear friends, but because we have such strong relationships, I am confident that we will stay in touch. And of course, I will work closely with my friend, we came to the Congress together, Congressman Engel, who will seek re-election to represent New Rochelle, and I know that he will do an outstanding job and make friends as I have with so many wonderful people in New Rochelle. This is a time for great challenges for the pro-Israel community, as well as those, those of us who are committed to stability and peace throughout the world. As we have watched the events of the so-called Arab Spring unfold, we have seen moments of great opportunity, but also moments of great peril. As the former chair and the current ranking member of the State and Foreign Operations Appropriations Subcommittee, I've worked to respond to the ongoing developments in the Middle East in ways that will protect U.S. national interests and ensure the security of our important ally. In the fiscal year 2012 bill, I work with my colleagues on the Appropriations Committee to provide full funding for Israel, 3.075 billion. This annual aid is critical to helping Israel maintain its qualitative military edge in the region. And I'm therefore very pleased that President Obama has requested 3.1 billion for Israel in the FY 2013 bill. And I'm going to continue to work hard in the Congress to ensure that full funding is included in the final spending agreement this year. I'm also very proud to be a co-sponsor of four additional pieces of legislation that demonstrate Congress's commitment to Israel. The first is the United States-Israel Enhanced Security Cooperation Act of 2012, which reaffirms our commitment to maintaining Israel's qualitative military edge. This bill spells out some of the fundamental tenets of our relationship with Israel and states Congress's commitment to Israel's security, to providing Israel with the military capability it needs to defend itself, and to expanding our military and civilian cooperation, which frankly has never been stronger. I want to assure you of that because I go to classified briefings not just once a week, several times a week. And the relationship between Israel and the United States, military, intelligence, has never been stronger. The second bill would extend U.S. loan guarantees to Israel for three more years, which is particularly important throughout this time of great volatility in the region. Israel needs to know that its economy will be protected in a potential crisis. Third, the Iron Dome Support Act authorizes funds for Israel to support the Iron Dome missile, def missile defense system, which was critical during the recent rocket attacks from Gaza when it successfully intercepted 90% of the missiles aimed at southern Israel. For those of you who have not followed this, it is extraordinary to see what this can do. And I am continually amazed, not being a technological wizard, which is the understatement of the year, what this can do to intercept Finally, House Resolution 568 affirms that it is U.S. policy clearly to prevent Iran from becoming nuclear capable and calls for continued and increased pressure on the government of Iran to stop its nuclear program. I 
I strongly support these four bills, and I work with my colleague Elliot Engel and my other colleagues in Congress to support their passage. Now, protecting Israel involves not only supporting aid to our ally, but also addressing the threats from the region. So let me briefly update you on our efforts on the Palestinian Authority, Egypt, and Iran. Throughout my time in Congress, I've supported our annual aid to the Palestinian Authority because I believe it is in our interest and Israel's best interest to support the ability of the PA to provide security and basic services. However, that assistance is predicated on the willingness of the Palestinian Authority to negotiate directly with Israel to achieve a lasting peace. I am furious. I was furious. I continue to be furious with Abu Mazen's incendiary remarks at the UN last fall, as well as his government's decision to pursue membership in UNESCO, his continued reconciliation efforts with Hamas, and his apparent disregard for the support that the US has provided over the years. I will continue to evaluate the situation and work closely with my colleagues in Congress, the Obama administration, and Israel to ensure that Israel's security is protected, we must find a way, in my judgment, putting aside all the perils, all the difficulty in the region, to get the Palestinians back to the ta table for meaningful negotiations with Israel without preconditions. Now, Egypt. In the final 2012 bill, we included conditions on aid to Egypt. The first is that Egypt continues to uphold its obligations under the Camp David Accord. The second is that Egypt support the transition to democracy and respect human rights, freedom of religion, expression and assembly, and due process of law. On Friday, Secretary Clinton certified that the Egyptian government has met the Camp David condition and she weighed the second conditions in the interests of U.S. national security. Now, I must tell you, throughout the turmoil in Egypt over the past year, I've been relieved to see that the government has continued to respect the peace agreement with Israel. This is a critical piece of our long-term friendship with Egypt. It's crucial for Israel's security. And while we all would have preferred to be able to certify rather than waive, that Egypt was respecting freedom of expression, association of religion, and due process of law, releasing the money, although an incredibly difficult decision, we felt on balance was important to ensuring that we have a role in continuing the development of democracy and protecting our own national interests. No guarantees. Can't be sure it's the right decision, but sometimes when you're weighing, you have to finally make a decision. Now, I still have very serious concerns. The Egyptian government's actions against American citizens and other NGO employees raise serious questions about its leadership role in the region and commitment to democratic principles. So it's a relief that the Americans are now out of the country, but we have to continue to press the government to respect the rights that we specifically put in our spending bill. And I'm going to continue to work with the administration to keep putting pressure so that Egypt continues to respect Camp David. And that is very tough, but essential. Finally, Iran. I am extremely concerned about the prospects of a nuclear Iran. Iran gaining a nuclear weapon, or even becoming nuclear capable, would be a disaster for the region and the world. It would set off a nuclear arms race that would not only escalate, te escalate tensions in an already unstable region of the world, it would also increase the likelihood of a weapon falling into the hands of a terrorist organization. It would be devastating to Israel's security, as the Iranian re regime has said, 
that the destruction of Israel is one of its goals. It would undermine our international non-proliferation regime, which the U.S. has worked hard to support and implement. It would strengthen a regime that increasingly abuses its own people, acts irresponsibly in the region, still supports the Assad regime in Syria, and calls the United States a great Satan. To stop Iran from becoming nuclear capable, we must keep all options on the table, political, <laughs> diplomatic, economic, and military. Now, I am committed to doing everything I can to support efforts to stop Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. It would be a disaster for Israel, the entire Middle East, and the United States of America. So, this is so bittersweet for me, but I'll come speak whenever you want. <laughs> I want to thank you for this honor. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with all of you tonight. I am very proud to be one of the strongest advocates in Congress for Israel. I'm going to continue to fight, not only in my role as the ranking member. By the way, when the Democrats, this is not a political occasion, but when the Democrats are in control, I'm the chair. So just remember that. Now I'm the ranking member of the committee that funds Israel. But I'm going to continue to fight for policies that protect and enhance the U.S.-Israel relationship. And in closing, I just want to say it's been such a great honor for me to represent you all for the last 24 years. Your friendship and support, and I have many wonderful friends in this room, has been very, very important to me. And I want to assure you that I will continue to work on issues of concern to all of us. And my friend Elliot Engel, who you will hear from, will continue to fight for the Israel-United States relationship. We have worked together on these issues, and please, whether it's the Long Island Sound or the Israel-United States relationship, feel free to call me up because I am there. My office is in White Plains. Love to you all and thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you, Congresswoman. As mentioned previously, we are truly blessed in having two members of Congress in attendance of our dinner this evening. It's most unusual. Congressman Engel also is serving his 12th term in Congress and also has a long and distinguished record for being a powerful and insightful legislator, particularly in the fields of healthcare, energy and foreign affairs. In regard to the latter, he sponsored a key resolution recognizing Jerusalem as the undivided capital of Israel. Regardless of political persuasion, we can all identify with that. Please join me in welcoming Congressman Elliot Engel. Thank you very much, Michael, and, and, and thank you so much for inviting me, and, and thanks to uh, everybody. Everybody has just been so so wonderfully friendly. I really, really appreciate it. Before I, I start, I just want to uh, congratulate uh, Sandra Nuri Weinstein and Judy and Bob Friedman for being honored tonight. Congratulations. <laughs> and of course, I want to congratulate my, my dear friend, uh, Nita Lowy, uh, also for uh, being honored and for all the, the hard work. You know, uh, people, um, when they get up and speak at, the, at any kind of uh, dinner, they always say nice things about the person who spoke before them or after them or whatever. But when it comes to Nita and myself, it's, it's really sincere and, and genuine. We, we came to Congress together in 1988. We're both in our 12th term. And um, if someone could get a capsulized version of what goes on in the House, 
You'll very often see Nina and I sitting together, standing together, wondering how each of us is voting on certain issues, and sometimes we, we, we vote together. If you look at our records, uh, you wouldn't see much of a difference in 12 years and thousands and thousands of thousands of votes. So I just want to say thank you for honoring Nita. She's a, a great congresswoman. She deserves every accolade that everyone can, can give her. Uh, report. Apportionment is a, a difficult process for all of us. As it turns out, I'm now going to represent areas that she's represented for many years, and she'll be representing areas that I've mentioned for many years. But you know what? I kind of think with Nita and Elliot, you know, it's sort of like a two for one. So uh, you're not going to lose Nita, you're going to gain me, and you'll have two, and that'll be better than one. Nita, thank you, and uh, thanks for being such a good friend and a great congressman. I, I just want to say, since, since first impressions are lasting ones, the last thing I want to do is get up here and talk for a long period of time. But I want to just tell you how, how um, pleased I am uh, to represent New Rochelle. I was married in New Rochelle 32 years ago. So this is coming home to me. And uh, of course, um, New Rochelle is, is a, a place where I have many friends, uh, Harris and Lally Bach, who uh, have been great friends uh, of mine, very, very active here. I know there's some of here. And your great uh, assemblywoman, Amy Paulin, who said to me, I'll help you in any way I can, but I already know how wonderful she is because I have, we have mutual friends who tell me how hard she works for the people of New Rochelle and surrounding areas. So thank you, Amy, also for, for your friendship. Um, I just want you to know that as uh, one of the most senior members on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, there is not a day that goes by where I don't wake up and think what is there that I can possibly do to enhance the U.S.-Israel relationship. There is nothing that's more important to the work I do in Congress than playing that particular role. I just came back from Israel. My youngest child is living there for a year. And every time I go to Israel, and I'm sure that you've had the same experience, you're just amazed at how much improved it's been. And the one thing that's been constant through the years, again, is the U.S.-Israel relationship. We are the best friends that Israel has. In fact, many times, I think we're the only friends that Israel has. And you know, presidents come and go, and prime ministers come and go, and even members of Congress come and go, although I don't want to go so fast. But the U.S.-Israel relationship remains and has to be constant no matter who's president of the United States or who's the prime minister of Israel. Because you don't have to be Jewish to love Israel, although Nina and I, of course, are both Jewish. But you have to love Israel because Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East and has the same values that the United States has as well. So years ago, I wrote the Syria Accountability Act and passed it in 2003, which slapped sanctions on Syria when nobody knew that it really even existed. And now with Ilyana Ross Layton in the chair of our Foreign Affairs Committee, she and I have reintroduced legislation to enhance sanctions uh, against Syria. You know, when we look at the peace negotiations, I really believe we have to look at the way things are, not as we wish them to be. And if the Palestinians really want peace, Israel's ready to sign, but it's got to be a real peace. And it's not just one-sided, where Israel makes all the concessions and the other side really doesn't have to do anything. The obstacle to peace right now, as far as I'm concerned, is the intransigence of the Palestinians in refusing to sit down and talk with Israel. It's not 67 lines, it's not settlements, it's not any of this other nonsense that we hear about from time to time. It's the fact that the Palestinians and the Arabs as a whole have to understand that Israel has been, is, and will continue to be the homeland of the Jewish people. So again, I just want to thank you. I look forward to, to representing New Rochelle. I look forward to having a very close relationship. I look forward with all of you. I look forward to listening to you and hearing what your problems are and what your concerns are. You'll get to know me. I'm a hands-on member of Congress. I'm a hands-on person. And I can just see in, in being here for a few hours, I've been here this evening. This is a wonderful shul, a wonderful place. And thank you so much for inviting me and listening.